Thursday, September 22, two older adults died, due to a fire, on William Villa Street, in San Juan. The fire department reported through its social networks, that the fire affected two residences, in events, reported at around 11.44 p.m., Thursday night. State Fire Marshal, Abelardo Perez, arrived at the scene to assess the damage, and subsequently preliminarily concluded, that the reason for the fire was, an unfortunate incident, due to candles. According to firefighters, and a police report, after extinguishing the fire, they located the body of a 72-year-old man, who died at the scene. His identity has not been disclosed, so far. Two women were rescued, and transported to the Rio Piedras Medical Center. Later, in the hospital, Asturiana Rivera, 93, died. According to the press office of the police headquarters, the deceased were family, but their relationship is unknown. The second injured woman, 65 years old, was evaluated by doctors, who classified her condition as, guarded. The Federal Prosecutor's Office in Puerto Rico, warned citizens about possible fraud schemes, associated with the passage of Hurricane Fiona. U.S. Attorney Stephen Muldrow, urged the public to report any suspected fraud, related to disaster relief operations, or federal funds for victims of Hurricane Fiona. He noted that any suspicion, can be reported to the National Center for Disaster Funds at, 1-866-720-5721, or through the portal www.justice.gov, backslash, disaster, dash, fraud, backslash, wet form, backslash, NCDF, dash, disaster, dash, complaint. The official also sent a warning to those predatory individuals, and organizations, that use this tragic event to take advantage of those in need, seeking to illegally profit from this natural disaster. The United States Attorney's Office will vigorously prosecute those who commit disaster-related fraud, including those who knowingly attempt to delay, or interrupt the delivery of critical supplies, to those who need them, such as water, gasoline, diesel fuel and other materials, Muldrow stated. For his part, the head of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Joseph Gonzalez, pointed out that disaster fraud, and related acts of corruption, harm those who need it most, at the time of greatest need. This should shock everyone's conscience, and move anyone who witnesses such acts, to immediate action. The FBI is on alert, and we ask anyone with information about disaster fraud, and or any related corruption, to call, 787-987-6500, or leave a tip online by visiting, tips.fbi.gov. Friday September 23rd, a woman was scammed, by a man who charged her for six anchors, but did not deliver the merchandise, and now, does not answer her calls. The police reported. According to a preliminary report, the woman filed, Friday afternoon, a complaint for fraud, that occurred on Wilson Avenue, in San Churse, in San Juan Puerto Rico. The complainant alleged, that she sent an unspecified amount of money, through ATH Mobile, to the supposed seller, for six, 275-gallon tankers. The seller agreed to deliver the tankers yesterday afternoon, and, now, he does not answer her calls, blocked her, and did not return the money. Turning out to be a scam, reads the report. The case was referred to the property division, of the Criminal Investigation Corps, of San Juan, for further investigation. The effects of Category 1, Hurricane Fiona, are still being determined. This hurricane affected the entire country, but caused most damage to the southwest. Some lost everything, under floods of almost 6 feet. Hundreds of people had to go to shelters. Many people like, Lillian, 74 years old, are living in FEMA-sponsored accommodations.
$100 million in losses, are estimated, in the agriculture sector. 90% of the banana, and plantain crops, were lost. To help, please go to, donationforpuertorico.com. The after effects of Hurricane Fiona, are still being felt. The fierce winds, and raging flood waters only foreshadowed, more devastation, as this building in Ponce, Puerto Rico, crumbled, 48 hours after being weakened, by the storm. Here, you see the building, after its implosion. Here, the bridge in Utuado, Puerto Rico, washes out, under the weight of the floodwaters. Since the start of the storm, National Guard troops have rescued more than 900 people, General Jose Reyes told a news conference. Here, a landslide, caused a massive boulder to obstruct PR6. Rescue teams assess the damage, as more shocking images emerge. September 22, a woman was shot to death, last Thursday night, near a park, in the Juanamados neighborhood, in Catano. In a press release, the police identified the victim as Martha Rivera Alvarez, 37 years old, and a resident of Guaynabo, Puerto Rico. According to the police report, a call through the 911 emergency system, alerted the authorities about shots fired. When the units arrived, they found the victim's body, inside a red Mitsubishi Mirage vehicle. Meanwhile, another police report indicates that a person was shot, at 2.30 in the morning, in the Juanamados de Catano residential complex. According to the police report, the Catano district checkpoint, alerted the police by radio, about gunfire. When the police arrived at the scene, they found a 19-year-old resident of Carolina, with a gunshot wound to the left hand. He was transported to a hospital, in stable condition. So far, both cases are investigated separately. Sunday, September 25th, a man was murdered Sunday afternoon, on the main street, of the San Antonio sector, in Dorado, Puerto Rico. He was identified as Nelson M. Perez Ramos, 24, and had a criminal record for controlled substances, reported the police. A call through the 911 emergency system, alerted the authorities about gunshots in the area. The fatality was recorded at 12.45, in the afternoon. 
personnel from the Criminal Investigation Corps of Vega Baja, and the prosecutor on duty, will carry out the investigation. Sunday, September 25th, two men were murdered, in circumstances that are being investigated by the police, in Carolina and Cedra. According to the police, the first of the cases was reported at about 11.53 p.m. Sunday, in front of the Villas de Isla Verde, condominium, located on Laguna Avenue, in Carolina. As reported, a call through the 911 emergency system, alerted the police about shots fired, and when the agents arrived, they located the body of a man on the pavement, who had gunshot wounds in different parts of the body. The police reported the second murder occurred at 12.17 a.m. Sunday, in the golf garage, located at kilometer 41.7 of Highway 1, in the Turabo neighborhood, in Cedra, Puerto Rico. According to preliminary information, a call through the 911 emergency system, alerted the police to a person with a gunshot wound, and upon arrival, the agents located a man with multiple gunshot wounds, in different parts of the body. The victim was transported to the Mennonite Hospital in Caguas, where he died, while receiving medical attention. In both cases, the victims have not yet been identified. Monday, September 26, the authorities seized, seven bales of cocaine, on the coast of Cabo Rojo, Monday night, reported the police bureau. The bales contained approximately 210 blocks, with an estimated value of $2,940,000. The intervention occurred when personnel from the Cabo Rojo Maritime Surveillance Unit, reportedly detected several people unloading the bundles from the boat. However, they managed to escape, and entered a wooded area. Agents seized the blue and white fiberglass homemade boat, with a 75 horsepower outboard motor. In addition, they seized electronic equipment such as a satellite phone, a cell phone and a global positioning system GPS. The Drug Enforcement Agency took over the investigation. In legislative news, earlier this month, the delegation of the new Progressive Party, stopped the legislative project that seeks to raise the minimum wage in the government sector to $10.50 an hour, thus heeding the call made by Governor Pedro Pierluisi to preserve his veto. The draft of the plan, whose final version should be unveiled in October, establishes a base salary of $9.25 an hour for employees. The poverty rate in Puerto Rico has been a consistent 40.5%. With over 50% of Puerto Rico's children living in poverty, Puerto Rico's economy has been, almost continuously, in a recession, for more than a decade. Hurricane Fiona disaster survivors, in Puerto Rico, are encouraged to register for federal disaster assistance, with FEMA. Survivors may register for assistance, even if they applied for assistance, for Hurricane Maria, the earthquakes, and any other presidentially declared disasters, in Puerto Rico. Survivors can apply for FEMA assistance online at disasterassistance.gov, by calling, 800-621-3362, or by using the FEMA app. The reconstruction of the aviary, of the Puerto Rican parrot, Amazon Ovidita, in the Rio Abajo State Forest, in Utuado, can be completed as designed. After the allocation of $3.5 million, which is added to an initial of $8.8 .8 million, authorized by the United States Congress, the Puerto Rican parrot is protected, by the Federal Endangered Species Act, which makes it a crime, to kill, molest, trap, or sell them, among other actions. Thanks for watching. Be sure and follow us on Facebook, for up-to-date news, weather, entertainment, tourism, information, viral videos, and more. Search Puerto Rico English News, or follow the link in the description. Find us on Twitter, at PR English News. Thanks for subscribing. Have an amazing week.